We, we are, are Stephen and Jill. Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Steve and Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from gorgeous Park City, Utah. Today, Jill and I <laughs> talk about the Land Academy Continuing Education Program. Explained. What? What did you say? We spent six months asking Land Academy members and just everybody what more they want. How can they be more successful? We know a ton, a substantial number of you are doing great. What can we do better? Do you need us to, uh, to, do you need to be more educated? Do you need another program? What do you need? And they all said, or the vast majority of people said, we need some form of continuing education in the form of, we need to stay motivated. Keeping us on track. We need to know how to utilize the MLS better. We need an on and on Where and I on. should be right now today. Yeah, we need a, a consistent long-term module after module. Hey, Steve, you're always talking about these new uh, new ways to look at data. Can, you, can we have a class on it? Or can okay. we get together in a small group? Put some stuff to uh, ask you questions and get your attention. Maybe six or eight of us or ten of us. That's in, so. Jill and I will talk about that in a second. And I can't wait because I I love. I, I didn't know realize it, but I would like to teach. I know you do. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the LandInvestors.com online community. It's free. And you're great at it. Thank you, Jill. Kathy wrote. Jill's in vacation mode. I am. She's this happy. Is fun. <laughs> Kathy wrote, hi, we are considering buying a nine acre property that has a narrow frontage on a curve. Because of the curve, there's a guardrail. I hope that's not right in front of the property. This is interesting. Uh, not sure how this would be addressed for road access. That answers my question. Would the county take down some of the guardrail or would we have to request access from a neighbor? The county office is hard to get a hold of, but wondering if anyone else has had this issue. Thanks, Kathy. May I? <laughs> Go right ahead. What? <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Guardrail, curve, slope. Uh oh. That's my that's how my that's my train of thought there. <laughs> Jill and I, late last year, purchased a, a commercial piece of property in Ohio for like ten percent of what it was listed. It was listed for a while came off the market we gave him an outrageous offer it was a deal funding deal that came in from another another member they accepted our offer because of life circumstances it had every single thing you're talking about we made two hundred and fifty thousand dollars on it here's why we checked with and the is a commercial piece of real estate that was zoned for hotel uh, hotel hotel motel hospitality and so it had all these things, and I had the same exact concerns, almost in this order that you have. And we found out through talking to the right people uh, and talking to the person who's going to eventually bought it from us that that's how they've, they've gotten over it in the past. And so none of this scares me. None of it. Can I share? No. Yeah. Okay. One of the things that we did that was really perfect for you, Kathy, right now, um, you do want to find out for sure from the county what what the end result is and then call number two and three and four are to three different brokers getting opinions because that's what helped us in that transaction too once we figured out what was possible then we had to talk to a couple of brokers and go do you have people for this type of a thing we all know now what what they need to do will they do it and we had two guys if you call three Hopefully two will come come in, and this I don't know if this is commercial or not, but in the commercial space, good brokers, they're really they'll type up something and they'll email it to you in the form like in a presentation, showing you know Amazon bought this and who bought this and you know traffic counts and why they think they can justify what they can sell it for, so it really makes you feel good, uh, if you in or it'll make you feel bad depending on what they come back with. And Either that's way, gonna help you, you need make to a decision. Know. Jill nailed it. Either way, you need to know. You have to get the answers to these questions to the point where you're satisfied to do the acquisition. One of the things that I look at on every deal is what's going on on either side of that property or in the immediate area. Right. You know, if every if it's all in a flood zone, but there's McDonald's there in a flood zone, and it's in the same flood zone that you, then they found a way to overcome it. So mm -hmm. there's stuff that, that can get you comfortable with, with doing the deal. 
Mm -hmm. uh, if ever, if there's not a, a structure in sight and there's guardrail everywhere, just go the other way. And don't do the right. deal. So, but I can only tell you what makes me comfortable in situations like this and guardrail property, especially in a commercial situation. It all has to get regraded anyway to be developed. Right. And so, the, in that grading process, you know, if it hopefully it's dry, they're going to figure out it's got a guard guardrail because there's something happening at the edge of that it's property. It's a drop off. Yeah. So, and usually it's drainage. Uh, and in some more severe cases, it's it it's you know side of a mountain. Yeah. And that if it's the side of a mountain, just don't buy it. Yeah. If it's regular grading issues that need to have uh, drainage issues that the, the person on either side of you have solved, there's a good chance you're going to solve it too. Correct. There's always a risk in this. That's why this is kind of a game. There's always, it's not, there's always a risk. Right. So you just need to make sure that it's within your risk threshold. And you want to be, harder, you know what the thing is, Kathy? Than, than said it you want to be, you need to be the pro on this property. You're going to have to spend some time on it because some of the best deals I have experienced and seen are when people dug in mm -hmm. and got stuff done when everybody else walked. So I, um, that's right. So I don't want you to walk too soon. Don't spend too much time on it. See what's possible and make a decision. Today's topic, Land Academy Continuing Education Explained. This is why you're listening. So I'm, I just started a blog that I'm going to do in the next couple, I don't know, week or two it's going to be finished I wrote I have all the outline but I haven't finished it the title of my blog is the same as this and it's the the title is basically after 1,000 or so consulting calls I guess we need an accountability group <laughs> 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 that's really where we are what she's what she means is a lot of the same questions come up in these consulting calls Correct. and that tells Jill and I that uh maybe we haven't been effectively instructing on these points because they keep coming up. So it's the same thing that brought, brought up land Academy though. That's yeah. the same reason we had to, we were overwhelmed with questions about how we do our, our bit run our business. So that's where land Academy came from. Now we're overwhelmed with this and that's where this is going to, is going to lead to. So imagine a situation where, uh, probably it'll end up being, I don't know exactly how we're going to roll it out, but it'll be once or twice a week or something like that where people can sign up for on a sheet or on a, an elect, uh, a website. You know, I'll, I'll announce or Jill will announce or staff will say we're holding a, a session or an accountability scenario on Tuesday at 4 o'clock. Uh, the first 10 people that, that are there is first come, first serve. First 10 people are welcome and however that uh, unfolds. And then the topics, as we develop through this, through our, our way through this, people can start to request topics. And so due diligence has always been a big one. Uh, so we'll go through that. Picking a county. You know, we've been doing this on Thursday at three o'clock for, for years and years and years. And it became consumed sure. with, would you do this deal? Which is good. It's fun for us to do. People give us their deals. They have them come in. They ask our opinions. Sometimes we pull other uh, people from the advanced group in. So it's, it's a much more organized version of that, but without the deals. Like, let's all pick a county together. Here's, a, you know, so 10 people come, I hold the session. They've got a county, uh, five or six counties that they think are a good idea. I put my two cents in and provide new ways, new tech, technological ways, because those are, how I pick a county is always changing, but, but how I picked a county when we did all the education programs is still stuck in, t in that moment of time. So all these things need to be updated and participation is good. It's just, it's a, I'm looking forward to it. I see it too as it's going to be an addition to, it won't replace and we won't take away our weekly Thursday member calls. That's a, such a valuable resource for people to get quick questions right now from about anything, you know, bring it. I don't care what it is, but so this will be more focused groups. Um, and like, like you had alluded to, it's, I see it as, it's going to, where you should be in the process. You're one month in. You should have this done. If you're not, we're going to get you there. What's holding up and, and we'll get you there. And so on and so on and so on. We have people in our group that hold consulting calls with us. Yeah. That They've been in our group for two and a half years. They finally got their first mailer out. They're having some success with it. Now they have a bottleneck and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. It's all about addressing each individual person's bottleneck. You know, when right. I started out, I was deathly afraid of doing deeds. I don't know why. I just was. It would have been great to have this kind of group where I could log in and say, and hear from somebody who's done a lot of deeds, you know, that there's really nothing to be afraid of. 
Exactly. <laughs> you know what's so great about that? You make a mistake. So what? They send it back. You fix it. You send it back again. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. It's like, just like having children. But people don't know that. That's a really good example, Stephen. People don't know that. And you're right. And there are other people that have little hangups like that. They need to hear it, know it, feel it, see examples, small intimate groups. I'm pretty excited. Me too. Happy you could join us today. Five days a week, you can find us right here on the Land Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on the Land Academy Show is called Re- The Real Estate Data Dashboard for Land Investment. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. I can't wait for you to explain data what is that is and what you're working changing. on and what's coming. We live in the greatest information age of all time ever in the history of the planet. And why shouldn't that translate to buying and selling real estate picture a dashboard that you could create for for yourself buying and selling stock there's such a tremendous amount of data uh, that you can access buying and selling stock I, I, i've never met anyone who buys and sells stocks that looks at a balance sheet i personally look at a balance sheet on any, every single thing that we analyze so there's stuff that matters to me and, and stuff that doesn't matter to uh, other people and and but all the information is available on any on Amazon stock, you can get just about anything you can possibly imagine. It's getting like that with real estate. When a piece of when you send out a mailer and you have 22 deals that come back, you should be able to look all this stuff up and say, "Yeah, I, I'm going to do this deal pretty quickly." To take it a step further, this is kind of the show. I was going to say, I can't wait to hear about that tomorrow. Right. Do you want to? Yeah. I can't wait to hear about that tomorrow, and I can't wait to hear from you. <laughs> so please like, comment, share. Subscribe everything on our YouTube channel. We appreciate that. We're We're Stephen Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.